by Kathy and Jeff back again. In Unit 10, we're looking at inherited traits as well as characteristics that are a result from interactions with the environment. The old nature versus nurture, and there are two standards. 3-LS3-1 provide evidence, including through the analysis of data, that plants and animals have traits inherited from parents, and that variations of these traits exist in a group of similar organisms. Also, 3-LS3-2 distinguish between inherited characteristics and those characteristics that result from a direct interaction with the environment. Give examples of characteristics of living organisms that are influenced by both inheritance and the environment. We're going to use the 5E model of instruction for this unit. The goal for our ENGAGE is to have students learning how to make good observations and inferences as well as how to make connections to the concept of habitats. The ENGAGE activity is to have students walk around the inside of school, the school habitat in other words, using a clipboard and a pencil and if possible maybe digital cameras. The students would talk about and record observations of the school layout, object locations, and accessibility. Back in the classroom, they discuss and record their findings on the board. Make sure they understand the distinction between an observation and an inference. An observation is something that they can see, feel, hear, touch, or smell, or an inference is something that can be concluded based on those observations, kind of using them as evidence. An example might be a chair outside the principal's office. An observation is that it is a chair. An inference might be that's where people go to wait to see the principal. Uh -oh. If weather permits, you might want to do this habitat walk outdoors instead. On day two, we do the explore part of our 5E. This might run over a period of a couple of days. Review the school habitat from the engage, and then students observe a webcam a photo of wolves, or perhaps a video of wolves in their habitat. Students record observations and inferences as they watch the wolves interact with the environment. Ask them about the observations specifically about the wolves themselves. Ask them to make observations about the wolves' habitat. Have students discuss their thoughts on the role of the wolves' traits. Ask questions to promote higher level thinking, for example, what do you think might help the wolves survive? What's your evidence to support that claim? And the old favorite questioning move, why do you think that? After discussing students' ideas, think about the following questions. What characteristics do wolves have that help them survive in this environment? How are wolves like and unlike their parents? What do they need to keep warm to be safe or to hunt successfully? How might these characteristics help the wolf to survive? Students might note that wolves live in snowy places or cold places and they are white, allowing them to hunt and not get hunted. Students need to make connections. They need to analyze observations to construct explanations based on available evidence, to identify patterns about the relationship of the animal, traits, their habitat, and survival needs. Use a journal prompt that might ask students to list wolves' traits, how the traits help them survive in the habitat, and the similarities between parent wolves and the offspring. Now they're ready for key vocabulary and concepts to be formalized in the explain part of our 5E model. For the explain, we're going to look at some nonfiction readings. A great book to begin this with is found on the Moodle site in the leveled reader folder. The book is titled, Could a Polar Bear Survive in the Desert? The book discusses the concept of traits, adaptations, environment, and survival. While reading the book, discuss observations and possible inferences. Students should understand that animals have different traits that support their survival in their environment. Another leveled reader that we have access to is called, Living Things Grow and Change. This book is also about animal traits and survival, but also considers life cycles and heredity. For the extend, students should work in groups as animal detectives. Each group will receive a folder with pictures of animals and their offsprings and a short reading. These readings can easily be differentiated. 
The detectives will use their ability to observe to investigate an animal. They should keep their animal secret until it is time for the reveal. The teacher asks and posts the following questions. What trait does the animal have that helps it survive in its habitat? What traits do offspring share with their parents? What traits did the offspring inherit from their parents? What traits do offspring of the same parents share? How do traits vary across the offspring? These questions help to direct the children to look closely at the photos and compare traits of parent and offspring and their habitat. An example could be that of parent and offspring polar bears. They both have small ears, but may have different shaped eyes. Students share the information they gather on their animal. They should make the connection between parent and offspring and know how these traits are inherited. They should also make the connection between animal traits and their habitats, for example, an elephant's big ears and the heat found in their environment. The final E, evaluation, might be that the students write and perform a skit, a rap song, or create a mural where they describe the animal's traits. They should also show connections and patterns among animals and look for patterns across animals in their habitats as well. Because you know, animals matter. And science matters. And size matters.